Hi, my name is Christina Noel. I'm a member, uh, a member of the Society for Creative Anachronism. I've been a member for 16 years. I've been an authorized drapier fighter for about 15 and a half of that, and I've been a marshal for 10. I was looking online and I didn't see a lot of them. I saw one video and it was kind of dark on how to use your drop tester. So I thought I would show you how to do it. I always use, first thing you'll need is your drop tester. If you haven't seen one before, it's this heavyweight stick, a tube, and a base, and two of these hose clamp things. You'll also need a screwdriver. A lot of people use the little hex nut things. I've been meaning to get to Harbor Freight and pick one up, but I am doing this during the quarantine of 2020, so <sighs> going to Harbor Freight randomly to pick up one tool isn't going to happen. <laughs> and I could pick one up at Walmart while I'm getting my groceries, but that's just extra time. <laughs> so what I always do is I always use my t-shirt as part of it because I'm always wearing a t-shirt underneath. So I figure there's no reason not to count it as part of the armor. So what you do is you put your fabric over this. My first one I'm going to test is my old one. And since this can cause fabric, can cause damage, you always want to test on the bottom in the back. That way, if it passes, you're still good. And if it doesn't, well, at least it's in the back. And a lot of times people will repurpose them if this one fails, because it is a couple years old. And it's seen at least two Pensix, maybe one, I'm not sure. I will be repurposing it into a gambeson for my, for my boy who is trying out, who is doing armored combat for the first time. Well, yeah, he needs a gambeson. Anyway, so you take these rings. What you want to do is you're going to have to have two on there. Kind of tight. This one won't go on because of the fabric. So you twist it out. This is much easier to do with the correct um, screwdriver thing. But again, I haven't had a chance to get one because of the global pandemic. You're going to want to try to get this one down as far as you can because you're going to need to get both of them on. So you might need to actually make this one out bigger than the other one. So that's down. And if you can see, it's down all the way against the base of the holder and you want it about that taut and you tighten it up again with your little screwdriver or nut driver but for right now this is what lives with my drop tester because it's something I can take out of the house and nobody knows and then you take your other one, and this is just to make sure it doesn't move anywhere. And you're also going to want to make it tight and strong. And you don't have a drop tester, I strongly recommend going ahead and spending the money and getting one from Darkwood. Um, you can make it yourself. There are directions in the various kingdom rules, society rules, etc., that discuss how to create 
one of these. It's some sort of uh, tube, um, some Covex pipe, and a weight of uh, conduit, and this pin. This pin is the tricky part to get because it is a it has to be a specific measurement. And so honestly, it's just much easier to acquire this commercially instead of trying to make it yourself unless you want to order. I think you can order these tips from McMaster Car or maybe even Fastenal, probably more likely McMaster Car, but then you have to order so many and I don't know if anybody really needs that many tips, but it is a thing that can happen. So I would just, you know, get a hold of Darkwood Armory. It ran me. The tester itself was around $50, $50, $60, and then shipping was another $10. So it's not that bad of an expense considering how long they last and how often you, <laughs> in theory, if you're the group marshal of a of a uh, shire or barony or something like that, how long it can last you. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your tube and you're going to hold it over the fabric. You don't want it to touch the fabric. Sometimes I will rest like the heel of my hand so that way I know it's not going to touch. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the tube I can't get it up high enough. And you're going to put it up in the in here and see how there's these two red lines right here and here. That is where they calibrate out. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold it in the tube where the two red lines meet right here. And what you're also going to do is make sure that this insert does not contact the tube when you drop it because you want it to be you want it to be a free drop and any contact with the outside can cause an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and test this. Again, I'm testing it on the back near the bottom. If for some reason it does pass, yay, I'm still in business. If it doesn't, well, I guess my kid's getting the Amson. <laughs> I have to stand up, unfortunately. Again, if you feel it, it's helpful because you want it to be, you know, about a quarter to a half inch off the fabric. And then have this. Again, make sure you're going to get a nice free drop. Line up. Shake it around in there a little, and in most kingdoms, including the Middle Kingdom of which I am a part, say that if it damages just the top layer, you're good. There's a dent here. There's no pop through. So let's see how well this worked out. In fact, I believe it is society that says the first layer can be popped, but no subsequent layers. Unfortunately, I checked this inside out, so, and it's the same fabric used for the whole thing. It's just a fighting tunic, and it's three layers. See damage on the first layer. My fingers are dry because the weather's been so good. There's no damage on the outside layer. As far as the second layer, I don't see any damage to it either. Let's see if I can't pull that away so I can see a little bit better.
I mean, you might have to get creative with moving it around, maybe use the tip of something. But I see no damage to the second layer either. So this garment actually passes, <laughs> which is excellent because that means I have, I will have a backup. And that makes me happy. So this one still passes as of May the 4th. See my Star Wars shirt. May the 4th, 2020. So, yay. So that one passed. Now I have five yards of the fabricstore.com ILO9 LILO19 bleached linen, which is the same thing that the other one was made out of. And I'm going to go ahead and test it. I still am going to use the t-shirt because, again, I always wear a t-shirt. So there's no reason not to count it as part of the armor. So I put the t-shirt over. And then because the target is for three layers of the fabric, I'm going to go ahead and unfold this. And then fold it again in such a way that we have three layers available at the end, which is here and here, because again, any damage, whatever, you can you can always trim off in this case when you go to make your under tunic. Or in the case of this, I'm going to be making a um, single garment with reinforced uh, gussets in the armpits because I am tired of having so many things to take care of and tuck in and tuck out. I've had three layers of that forever and I wanted to try something new. So here's two layers here. I'm going to fold a corner back. And you can count one, two, three layers of the brand new stuff. We'll get that organized, get that down. And then again, you gotta mark your, get your stuff tightened on there. It will take some loosening on the rings because they did pop off easier. They tend to pop off easier than they go on. That one's fairly well down. We tighten it up. Again, you don't want it as tight as a drum. You want it about embroidery hoop tight. I know a lot of sensors that embroider, so hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, so, you know, just a little give, not, not a ton. And then, of course, you want to double up your ring. get it put on there. You don't want to like overlap the rings. It's kind of the hard part when you're trying to set this up. And it helps if you try to stagger the bolt things in the back. It really does. Because that way you can have it nice and tight, or nice and easier to get to if you have to make an adjustment as opposed to other ways that you have to do it. And again, that embroidery hoop tight, I'd embroider on that. I know people that might consider that still a little loose for their work, but it's fine. <laughs> for me, 
again, take your tube and you hover it, you know, quarter inch or so above. Again, you need to, you know, brace with your fingers or whatever you have to do. It is kind of a balancing act. Usually it's better to balance it. And then get your lines lined up. Swing it around in there, make sure it's got clearance. And three, two, one. That was a nice stop. And this also looks like it passed at three layers, which will make me exceedingly happy. Again, all you have to worry about getting damage is your outer layer. You, can, you will expect your inner layer to get some uh, deformation because it is a forcey, it is a force thing. First layer has a minor hole. Second layer has a dent, which a dent is fine because you did drop 1.5 joules on it. And there's a dent on that piece. And again, t-shirt is fine. So that is the basics of how to run your drop tester. Uh, you can use it on just about any fabric. I've had to drop test canvas. I've had to drop test um, cotton. Most people wear linen nowadays because it breathes better. A lot of people with more with a lot of money, uh, which doesn't include me, wear uh, ring mesh, which you can also acquire through Darkwood Armory, but for something my size, I'm looking at something in the multiple hundreds of dollars, which I do not have sitting on my, sitting to hand. That might be a gift in a couple of years for myself. <laughs> um, the other thing, you know, people wear leather when they fight. I don't know how well that works as far as breathability and stuff, but it does also need to be drop tested uh, regularly because the leather as a natural substance does break apart. Uh, the only thing that doesn't seem to need drop tested as frequently is the ring mesh, but um, again, they do recommend you do, do a drop test on it, you know, every once in a while. It's not as strict a standard as it is with the fabric because everybody generally just says, I wear a chain and it's good, but you know, they do recommend a periodic drop test of chain, even though it rarely ever fails. Um, the big issue you want to consider is um, you know, what's, what's your comfort level, what's your breathability, uh, where do you live? You know, people that live in uh, some parts of Texas and Arizona, they've found other um, hybrid fabrics that work well. I don't know if anybody's experimented with a um, blend of the moisture wicking fabrics and linen. I'm not sure how that would work out, but you just have to look at what your climate is, what your choices are, and see what works for you. Around here in the mid-realm, I live in southern Indiana. The usual is, you know, the three layers of linen. Most people do wear a t-shirt underneath just for comfort. <laughs> um, I do it because it helps with the uh, containment of, you know, well, I'm a female, so obviously it helps with management of certain bodily issues let's <laughs> just say that um otherwise i really can't think of anything earth shattering to tell you if you have any questions or comments you can always uh leave a comment in the section below or you can uh email get a hold of me through email if 
you know, it's in the, I bet I believe you can send a uh, non-comment but a direct message, or you can Twitter me at uh, Terry Lynn, two thousand T E R R I L Y N two thousand one, and that will um, get to me. You can reach me through Twitter there, and I believe that's it. If there are any anything you can come up with, anything you'd like to have seen differently done in the presentation, then just let me know and I will see what I can do for you. And uh, may the fourth be with you.